Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and in this episode of Python 3 Crash Course, we're going to go over the PyCuda module. So when we're working with very large pieces of data, maybe a large matrix, maybe a large array, and we want to do some kind of operation on it, well, we don't necessarily want to do that on the CPU. And we might we might want to you know use some kind of accelerator to speed this up. So in the case of PyCuda, this gives us a nice interface to working with NVIDIA GPUs, the compute side of NVIDIA GPUs, that is. Uh, so CUDA, if you're unfamiliar, is uh, NVIDIA's uh, compute programming language. So it allows you to write uh, high-performance code for GPUs uh, for non-graphics workloads. And PyCuda is uh, a way that we can do that uh, instead of in a C or C++-like program, we can do it inside of uh, Python. So let's go ahead and open up this example, which is gpudoubling.py. So the first thing we need to do, of course, is we need to uh, import and initialize PyCuda. And we do that by first importing the driver. Then, if we don't want to manually initialize anything, we import pycuda.auto in it. And then, of course, we need a compiler. So, uh, CUDA is going to be uh, going to be a C, C++ like language. So, it's a compiled language. So, you know, any code that we specify in here has to eventually be compiled before it's sent to the GPU. Uh, then, we'll go ahead and include NumPy again for some convenience with making arrays. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, just declare an array with some random numbers. In this case, um, 16 uh, elements inside of a NumPy array. And then we'll go ahead and set the type to just be floating point 32-bit numbers. Uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to allocate some memory on the GPU. So in, most, in all the pri uh, Python programs we've looked at so far, we've completely ignored the idea of allocation. But uh, you know, this is something that you know, we have to do for the GPU. So the GPU exists in a separate memory system than the CPU. So you know, we have to make sure that the GPU has some space ready for us uh, to put our data. So in order to do that, we call this uh, CUDA.memalloc. And this just says, hey, I need some of the memory that's on the GPU. So again, this is separate physical memory. So you've got your memory on your CPU and you've got your memory on your GPU. And these are physically separate. Um, and this just says I need some portion of that. And how much? I need a.inbyte. So we just take this numpy array, and this numpy array allows us to get the number of bytes that it takes to store this numpy array. So the next thing we need to do, because it is separate physical memory, is we need to copy the data over. And we do that with this cuda.memcopyh2d, which just stands for host to device. So host generally refers to the CPU, and then device generally refers to the GPU. So we just say we want to put it uh, in this a underscore GPU, which is what we just allocated up here. And then uh, what do we want to copy from? We want to copy from a, which is just our numpy array. So the next thing we need to do is actually specify a, uh, a kernel that's going to run on the GPU. So our kernel is just uh, what we call you know, our, our CUDA function uh, that's going to execute on the GPU on every single thread. So you know, if you're interested in C++ functions or CUDA in general, uh, feel free to check out uh, CUDA Crash Course, the other series that I have, but we'll go over the very basics of what this means at a you know, 10,000 foot level. So we use this underscore underscore global just to denote that this is indeed a CUDA kernel that will get launched from the CPU and run on the GPU. This void is just the return type, and so this, this CUDA kernel is not going to return anything. Then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to give it a name, which is just double array, and we're going to pass it an argument. Now. Python doesn't have this idea of pointers, but you know the basic idea behind this float uh, pointer A is just saying that I'm going to pass you the location of the memory that I allocated. So A is going to be that A underscore GPU. Okay, so then we have the body of our function, which is just going to be two lines. So this is a very simple kernel. All we're doing is doubling a bunch of numbers in an array. So in this case, um, we'll say I want an integer and then I'm going to call it idx, and then it's going to set equal to this block idx.x, block dim.x, plus thread idx.x. So now we've got to step back and understand how uh, each thread knows what to do within a kernel. So when we have a, a problem, we map it to something called a grid. So the grid is just going to be an arrangement of threads that represents all the work we want to do on the problem. Now, uh, the grid itself has to get subdivided into little scheduled pieces called thread blocks. And so that's what these block IDX represents. 
So these things can be represented in three dimensions, but because we just have an array, we can just have one uh, single dimensional linear array of threads, which will get split up into individual thread blocks. So to figure out, you know, globally, say if we have, you know, a whole uh, a big line of threads where we are, uh, which uh, each thread, uh, sorry, which uh, thread we are within that big long line, we have to do some kind of base offset calculation. So this block ID X times block dim dot X just says, okay, you know, if I'm the third block and all the blocks are, you know, say have four threads, uh, you know, what's going to be the base of where I start finding my location. So in that example, it would be 12, right? So block ID X would be three, block dim would be four, and then four times three is 12. And then we have to figure out thread ID X. So if you consider that example where we have four threads per thread block, so that's our block dim, uh, then this thread ID X will just be a value between zero and three. And so that's how we figure out globally which thread we are. Uh, so then after this line, every thread ha uh, has a unique IDX, which says who it is within the grid. And then finally, we just index this array based upon um, you know, which thread you are. So in this case, 16 threads are going to do these 16 doubles all at the same time. So instead of having to have a for loop, we can just have this as a single statement. And the parallelism comes from the fact that we've got you know, multiple threads doing these operations on different elements of this array. And that's it. Um, that's actually the end of our CUDA kernel. So we just need to figure out which thread we are globally, and then we need to figure out what we're doing, which is just this doubling in this case. So after we've got this defined, right, so this module, what we're going to do is we're going to, we have to get the function, right? So we have to get this uh, CUDA kernel, and we do that by calling module.get function and then the name of this kernel, which is double array. Then to actually call this, uh, uh, call this kernel, we simply just like a normal function. Uh, in this case, we've called this thing function, so we'll just do function. It'll look like a function call, and then as an argument, it will take the uh, arguments to the original kernel, which in this case is going to be a float pointer a. So that's just like I said, that's just going to be the memory location uh, where the GPU memory is. So in this case, we allocated that memory at a underscore GPU. So we'll just give uh, this CUDA kernel call a underscore GPU. And then we have to specify two things, right? And that's this block and grid. Now we just mentioned uh, defining a grid and defining a uh, block. And that's exactly what we're doing here. So this just says, I want a grid that's a dimensions one by one by one. So that's X, Y, Z. So this essentially says, I want to launch, launch a single thread block. Now this block equals says how many threads are in each thread block. And in this case, we're saying um, the dimensions are going to be 16 by one by one, or basically we're going to just have 16 threads in the X dimension, which is all we need because all we have is an array of 16 elements. Okay, so at this point, we've, uh, we've, got, we've already executed or we've just launched our kernel on the GPU. So we didn't have to worry about compiling anything ahead of time. We simply ran the script and it'll all kind of happen behind the scenes. So then we need to have a space to put the result. So we'll go ahead and get a little bit of space by, call, by doing this a underscore doubled and we'll just set that equal to np.empty like a. And this will just give us a numpy array of the same size as whatever we pass it here. In this case, it's just going to be this host vector a. Then, like I said, we've got a separate physical memory, so we're going to need to get the data back to the CPU. Because right now, after the CUDA, the CUDA kernel finishes, the data and result is still on the GPU. So we get it back by doing the opposite of host to device, which is this CUDA.mem copy device to host, but so from the GPU to the CPU. So then we're going to copy it into this A underscore doubled, which is just this uh, numpy array. And then it's going to come from that piece of memory that we allocate to this A underscore GPU. And we'll go ahead and print the result. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this. So we can do Python three, GPU doubling that PY. And you see, we get this result of two numpy arrays the first one, uh, and then the second one, which is doubled, where every element is doubled. So, you know, this 1.4115, etc., goes to 2.823, 2.8, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2.9, 2
and say the last one, which is negative 0.2038, etc., goes to negative 0.407. So to kind of prove that this is running on the GPU, because you may just think, well, it's just maybe calling some function and uh, running on the CPU, we can run the uh, NVIDIA profiler, which allows us to profile kernels and API calls running on the GPU using nvprof, which is the NVIDIA profiler. And then we can call the same uh, on this Python 3 called the GPU doubling.py. And as you can see, it will give us a printout saying what the GPU activities are. So we can see that there was a uh, host to device memory copy, a device to host memory copy, and there's our kernel, this double array. So, you know, generally, we're not going to launch work this, that's this small on the GPU. And the reason is, uh, you know, launching a kernel has overhead. We have to copy, we have to allocate memory on the GPU. We have to copy memory to the GPU, and then we have to launch the kernel itself, and then we have to copy memory back. So that can have quite a lot of overhead that, you know, we can't really, or that it, it makes it so that it's not much use to launch things on the GPU if we're running such small you know, piece of work. This was, this would be way faster just run on the uh, on the CPU but like I said generally when we're doing this we're going to be working with very very large data sets so you know this isn't going to be a 16 element array this is going to be a uh, you know millions of elements potentially okay so that's gonna go ahead and do it for this episode so um, feel free to check out all my stuff at uh, github.com slash coffee before arch got right here. So here we have all the code uh, that corresponds to all the series we do. So if you're interested in CUDA programming, I've got a repository for GPU programming with CUDA. Uh, if you're interested in C++ programming, I've got one that deals with that. And then of course we've got this series, series which is Python 3 Crash Course. So feel free to check me out there. We've got all the code here. So this week we looked at modules, PyCUDA, and this GPU doubling.py. So feel free to download this, play around with it, and let me know if you have any questions. And as always, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.